I'd like to take a little bit step back and talk about something I called analog equivalent rights. And first, a, a brief introduction. I am the founder of the Swedish Affairs Pirate Party, and I was also early into Bitcoin, and these days I'm working as head of privacy and private internet access. One of the things I keep saying is that privacy really remains your own responsibility these days, and we'll see why. Because as we're looking at analog equivalent rights, what I mean by that concept is that our children should have the same set of civil liberties in their digital environment as our parents had in their analog environment. I'm basically arguing that our children should have no less civil liberties that our parents had. And that should not be rocket science. That should not even be controversial. So what does that mean? Let's take a look. How many in here think it's reasonable that people share music, movies over the parapet? Let's see a show of hands. Most. How many think it's reasonable even if that means artists lose money? Show of hands. A little less. I'll be coming back to this and you'll see why. It used to be that our parents could haul up some coins, buy a newspaper on the corner, read whichever newspaper they wanted without anybody knowing about it. Our children have lost that right. Today, the government knows on, not only what newspapers our children are reading, but what articles in those newspapers, in what order, for how long, and what they did afterward. The government also knows which articles our children considered reading, but didn't. When you enter Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, there's a small sign saying that Bluetooth, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi tracking is in operation. What that means is that you're being tracked in real time to the sub-footstep level and that this is being stored, probably to be used against you or for marketing purposes for a very long time. Our parents had the right to walk in public untracked. Our children have lost this right. Diaries. When the police had a search warrant in most European countries, a diary had a very special status. The police could search the entire premises, but they were never, ever allowed to open a personal diary. It was considered far too private to be accessible on a whim to law enforcement. Today, our phones are being searched at borders because they feel like it. And computers, which are, far more, which are far more private than a diary, have the legal protection of a work tool. Legally, it is considered a wrench. Our children have lost the protection of the diary. Our parents could have private conversations. This sounds like our children still can, but let me illustrate just how far the impact has gone in private conversations. And I'm going to use Facebook links as an example. When I posted a link to the Pirate Bay in a Facebook conversation, and this happened to be 
a link to Pirate Bay material that I was distributing. It was political material. A pop-up showed up in Facebook saying, you have pasted a, a link suspected to contain harmful material. Please don't do this. To drive this point home, imagine when our parents had a phone call and they were discussing something, no matter what. A little voice had popped in saying, you have discussed a forbidden subject. Please refrain from discussing forbidden subjects in the future. This is what's happening. This is what is happening. The analog letter. The analog letter. Our parents had the right to send an anonymous letter to anybody they wanted, as long as the postage was paid. It would be untracked in transit. It would be unopened in transit. The messenger was never responsible for the contents. The courier immunity is something that dates back to the Roman Empire. Our children have lost all of these rights. When they are communicating online today, it is tracked. There is intermediate liability. They can no longer be anonymous, and they don't get to send what they want. There's an interesting thing here about checks and balances. Our parents were able to send copied drawings and copied music in letters in the postal system because the postal secret was considered more important than copyright infringements. They could send music because it was not considered serious enough to break the postal secret. These checks and balances has not carried over, have not carried over to digital. And I think it's entirely, uh, entirely reasonable to demand that our children have the same rights in their digital environment as our parents had in their analog environment. It should not even be controversial. And that is completely regardless of whether somebody need, can no longer run a profitable business in the face of sustained civil liberties. That you do not get to dismantle civil liberties just because you don't know how to run a business. It's really that simple. Thank you. What I've been talking about for the last 10 years is something as simple as having the same laws apply online as they do offline. It doesn't sound like rocket science, does it? And interestingly, the copyright industry talks about the same thing, but they cherry pick which laws should apply online and never mention the checks and balances that we have in the offline world. The same laws should apply online as offline. Our children should have the same set of civil liberties that our parents enjoyed. And today they don't. They are being lost across the entire board. And I call this analog equivalent rights. What I mentioned here is just a small, small piece. The list goes on and on and on you could mention libraries, for example. Librarians took privacy very seriously. Libraries were the place where warrant canaries against the FBI were invented. Today, the government not only knows what's your, what you're searching for, but also what you thought about searching for, but didn't. So once more, 
How many think it's reasonable that our children can send anonymous packages, maybe containing music, in the mail electronically, just like our parents could, even if it means somebody can't run a business on it? A little bit more, quite a bit more. I'm happy to see I made a point. Thank you so much. I think we have time for one question. I'll be brief. Yeah, excellent speech. They're very. One thing that would overcome a lot of this is if we have have in the United States of America, which isn't perfect, the uh, First Amendment, which gives you the, the citizen protection from the state. One yeah. reason the likes of Rudd and May don't want such a thing is because it empowers the citizen, and empowering the citizen actually takes away governmental control of you. So I know I'm stating the obvious here, but um, I just thought I'd say that. It's. There's a lot of confusion around freedom of speech in that what it means is that it frees you from repercussions from the government from offering an opinion. It does not free you from repercussions from your fellow citizens. It does not force everybody to like you. It does not force people to listen to you. So, yeah, I guess, I, I guess you, you more had a point than a question, right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yes, thank you. Thank you all.